a very good afternoon to everybody tuning into the webinar. We're very glad to have you here with us. I'm Davis from Oriental Remedies Group, and I'll be your MC for the day. Oriental Remedies Group is a patient-oriented leading healthcare organization that offers both TCM treatments and tech-enhanced therapies. Our team of seven Singaporean bilingual physicians have on average over 10 years of experience and are trained in both traditional Chinese medicine and biomedical science. On top of TCM therapies such as acupuncture, Oriental Remedies Group is the only TCM clinic offering electrolymphatic drainage therapy, a state-of-the-art technology using an FDA-registered medical device to help our patients feel better, faster. Today's webinar is part of our web series, The TCM Way, where our experienced physicians share about how TCM can help you in every part of your life. So why are we holding this series of webinars? It's simple. We have a bold vision to help all mankind be the best that you can be by helping you to lead a fulfilling and healthy life. We have seen many patients whose quality of life is affected by having poor health, which is why we strongly drive education to help the public be in the optimal physical condition to achieve their full potential in life. Our Inter Remedies Group has been featured on various established media platforms, such as The Straits Times, Channel News Asia, and The Business Times. We have also proudly partnered with many companies, such as Health Promotion Board, MHC, and the studio that brought us all the movies we know and love, Disney. Our first speaker today is Physician Leong Wei-Zhen, the Chief Medical Officer of Oriental Remedies Group. Physician Leong graduated from the Nanyang Technological University and the Beijing University of Chinese Medicine with a double degree in Biomedical Science and TCM, followed by a Master's degree in TCM as she was awarded the prestigious Chinese Government Scholarship. She set up Oriental Remedies Group in 2013 with the vision and passion to bring the best of both Eastern and Western treatments to her patients. Physician Leong specializes in providing cancer support treating chronic conditions, and helping patients with their mental wellness. Our dear physician Leong has been invited to many events as a guest speaker to share her wealth of experience and knowledge. An example would be the Pfizer Medical event with over 300 medical doctors, where she demonstrated and explained the benefits of acupuncture to the public. She has also been personally interviewed by Channel News Asia on her views for the best practices for TCM. And not only that, she has been featured on the local newspaper, The Straits Times, not only once, but several times. And despite all her achievements, Physician Leung still takes the time and effort out of her busy schedule to help the needy and unprivileged by providing free TCM and basic healthcare. Our second speaker for today is Physician Julie Lo, a senior physician from Oriental Remedies Group. Physician Lo also graduated from the Nanyang Technological University and the Beijing University of Chinese Medicine with a double degree in Biomedical Science and TCM. She was even awarded the Chinese Government Scholarship for Outstanding Academic Achievements during her time in Beijing. Physician Lo is an experienced trainer for generous TCM, uh, general TCM wellness programs to the general public, secondary schools, and polytechnic students. She also has practical hands-on knowledge in treating patients with various ailments, being in active practice since graduation. Physician Lo also specializes in wellness beauty, pediatric care, and cancer support. And now we will begin the webinar for boosting your immunity for cancer warriors the TCM way, and I'll pass the time on to Physician Leong. Physician Leong, please. Hey everyone, okay. thank you Davis for the introduction of the clinic as well as the physicians. So for those of you who are new to Oriental Remedies, hello. So for our existing patients, we are glad to see you here today again. Okay. So spend the hour learning with us. Hmm. This is quite an interesting topic, right? Okay. So cancer is a topic that is very close to my heart because my grandfather, okay, guy over here, okay, my grandfather had, was diagnosed with stomach cancer and passed away within a year. So before his cancer diagnosis, he was actually a very strong fellow. So he took care of me and my siblings. Yes, imagine him chasing after the four of us. Yeah, so he has to fetch, fetch us from school. We were pretty much under his care until my parents come home from work. So when he was diagnosed, it was already stage four. And there were limitations to what his uh, treatment that may be available for him. So suddenly, I see him look like from this okay, smiling fella okay, to someone who is a lot frail and fragile. Yeah. So he was often very tired. He was constantly sleeping. Yeah. Because I was like, remember last time he used to play, you know, the computers and stuff like that. But end up, he was like, okay, lying down. He even moved his bed to the living room. Yeah. So at that point of time, I don't understand much about the condition. I was just like, hey, why is Ye Ye like, you know, sleeping in the living room? Um, but I could still remember what I saw in detail because 
even at a young age, it's very difficult to see someone who used to be very strong, okay, and suddenly, you know, like um, being weak and then this person being very close to you. So it's really like aged in my mind. So when I became a TCM physician, I also wanted to have a special interest in helping cancer patients. Do you know that statistically, one out of every three deaths in Singapore is due to cancer? Yeah. So imagine if there are 100 of us on this webinar, 30 of us would die from cancer. Yeah. Isn't it scary? It is scary, but as a TCM physician, I want to tell you and I want to believe uh, that we can stop this trend from worsening. Okay, this is why we want to share practical tips with you today, okay, to boost your immunity. So if you are with us today, you're probably a cancer warrior, okay, or you have a loved one who's battling cancer, or you may be a caregiver. So we want to share with you knowledge and practical tips that you can do right after this session, okay, to support you to have better energy, to combat any of the side effects that you might have, and to have better immunity, as well as most importantly, better quality of life. Okay, so um, for those of us who have been joining, or for those of you who have been joining us, okay, in our past webinars, you'll know that you know, our content is very cow, okay? We'll, we'll do the whole hour, okay? Um, so, but as I was doing this deck, and I was happily doing it, I realized that oh, there's a lot of topics and there's a lot of information that I want to share with you. So I told my, my team, I said, hey, can we raise it to one and a half hours, okay? So um, I'm going to split into three parts, okay? This one whole one and a half hours, okay? The first part, I'm going to share the causes of cancer, okay? Which is to fight something, okay? So to fight something, we must first understand how it started. So in this section, I will bring about two keywords. Mm -hmm. Two keywords. First one, immunity. Very good, some of you may have already known about it. Number two is oxidation. Okay, secondly, Physician Low will be sharing about the TCM tips. Okay, let's see. Yes, so physician will be sharing our TCM tips such as food, um, exercises, herbs that is useful and helpful for cancer patients. And some of these may not be commonly known. Okay, and the last part I will share with you how oriental remedies okay, can help you with our tech enhanced therapies. So this is oriental remedies group um, value add to our patients because we constantly source for treatments and technology that will help you feel better faster. Okay, so without further ado, let's go into why cancer. Okay, there's a lot of controversies, okay, of what causes cancer. So does drinking from plastic bottle cause cancer? Okay, what about 5G? Does it cause cancer? Okay, the reality is we don't know yet. Yeah, we don't know everything about cancer because science and technology is constantly evolving. Okay, first they prove this theory and then psh, they don't want, they disapprove it. Another theory, mm, disapprove it. So it's constantly evolving. Okay, to, to show you how much the, our understanding of cancer, okay, over the last 90 years or so, okay, I want to share with you this shocking example of cigarettes. All of you know cancer, but cigarettes cause cancer, right? Okay, so, but, you know, we all understand this thing. Okay, if you smoke a lot, yes, there's a high risk of cancer. Okay, and that's the reason why, you know, we are even telling kids, you know, teenagers in school, do, do not pick up smoking. But yet, in the past, okay, studies have shown that, you know, cigarettes cause cancer. But in the past, in 1930s, right, tobacco companies actually used doctors in their ads. Okay, and the claim was, which cigarette causes less throat irritation? And then the answer is, Oh, more doctors smoke camels. Okay, so why? Because then they didn't know the link between cigarette smoking and lung cancer. Okay, so a majority of them actually smoke. Okay, so um, just to let you know, okay, my grandfather actually smoked as well. Okay, so he's a smoker. He's a heavy smoker, I would say. Okay, but uh, smoking has been uh, linked with, largely linked to lung cancer. 
cancer as well as stomach cancer. Yeah. So um, perhaps there were a few doctors in the 1930s who is warning others about what um, cigarette smoke can lead to, you know, it can cause a lot of irritation and inflammation in our body and then may lead to cancer. But they are often viewed with skepticism, okay? And they are often labeled as paranoid, okay? So just as how we view people who warn us about plastics, who warn us about pollution, okay? But in my own opinion, do your own research, okay? If something may have a cancer risk, play it safe. Don't use it. Don't touch it. Ah, okay? Just avoid it. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay? So if uh, some of you have been to the clinic and who know me, okay, I actually always use a glass bottle instead of a glass plastic bottle. Ah, okay? So why? So what do we actually know about cancer now? Mm -hmm. Up to 50% of cancers are preventable. Yep. Okay, there's proven risk of cancer on the right. Things like diet, alcohol, smoking. They are all linked to our lifestyle. Meaning, something we can control. Okay, so I know all of you are very familiar with that. But let's look to the left. Uh, like the cancer, uh, like the cigarette example that we shared earlier. Okay, there may be many cancer causing things that we are exposed to, but not yet proven. Mm, okay, so as research are constantly coming up and evolving. So maybe let's go with the first one, plastic bottles. Okay, so uh, I think we have shared with, if those of you who have joined us for the previous webinars, okay, you probably know the answer. Okay, so we consume an average of one plastic cup a week. Yes, a week. So this is my uh, TCM license card. And then I have my EasyLink card, uh, my driver's license. Okay, I look good, right? Uh, okay, as well as my NTUC card. Okay, so we consume one plastic card a week. Anyone knows how heavy is this plastic card? Have a guess. How heavy is this plastic card? Hmm? Uh, okay, we have uh, 10 grams. Like 10 grams is a bit too much. Okay, Ilana go for 5 grams. Okay, Davis go for 25 grams. 2 grams. Okay, so... On average, each cut is about 5 grams. So, one week one, week two, week three, week four. So, this is how much cuts, okay, how much plastic we consume in a month. So, how many weeks are there in a year? How many weeks are there? Average, about 52 weeks, okay. My wallet, this is my wallet, huh? it can't even hold 52 cuts, okay. So, that shows how much plastics we are consuming. Okay, and all these microplastics are is thought to have a possible estrogen-like effect on men and women. Okay, and they cause potential hormonal imbalance. Okay, what about exposure to EMF? Okay, do you know that some people they are so sensitive when their phones they are switched on for very long, they actually have a buzzing sensation in their hands, and this magnetic sensation is very uh, irritating to them. Yeah, so what about that? As well as cosmetics. Okay. Cosmetics have known to have a strong link with uh, skin conditions as well as cancer. There's even a group called EWG. Okay, you can go and check them out. They highlight the carcinogens they are used in the cosmetic industry. So at this point, um, sometimes I share this, you know, be my friends or my patients, then they will tell me, ah, physician no! Like, like very bad news, you know, everything has a possibility of causing cancer. Then what can I what can I do? You know, the, how can I reduce my risk or like if I'm diagnosed, uh, how can I support my body to like recover better and even prevent a relapse? Okay, the question is like we said, healthy life choices. Is it? If you have been diagnosed, okay, changing your lifestyle will support your recovery. So if you are going through painful chemo or radiotherapy, okay, or suffering from the side effects, okay, there are herbs, there are food choices that can help you relieve your discomfort. Mm, okay, so if you feel anxious about the whole process, okay, probably we are just first diagnosed, okay, then what we can, we have partners with uh, therapists who can actually kai tao, okay, what we call um, to help you through emotionally and mentally. Or what about acupuncture? Okay, acupuncture have all, 
always shown to have a relaxing capability. They help you relax and uh, just ensure that your body can go through the whole process. Okay, so I have seen patients with um, late stage cancer. So they, by making very good lifestyle choices, they actually get to enjoy a better quality of life with their family, with minimal pain and side effects. Okay, so remember, today at the end of the tunnel, okay, there is always hope. So we want to share some of the choices, some of the tips that can help you boost your immunity. Okay, and reduce what we call oxidation. Now, now let's look into, you know, in order to improve your immunity, how did cancer first happen in the human body? Okay, how did it first happen? Mm -hmm. There is, like we said, this bar of progression. Okay, so now this is a normal cell. Okay, so I want you to recall what you saw in a couple of slides back. Okay, what are the proven triggers of cancer? Mm. Yes, we have alcohol. Good, we have smoking. Yes, you are reading the slides well. Huh? Because all of this actually cause oxidative stress or oxidation leading to DNA damage. So today, I want you to take away two keywords I said earlier. First one is immunity. Okay, the second one is oxidation. Yeah, so why is oxidation bad? Okay, to put it simply, um, if we cut an apple, okay, very common example, but just in case those of you who don't know, I'm just going to use it again. If you have an apple, you cut it up. Cut it up. And then after that, you leave it out there. Ah, uh, maybe you're busy, you forget about it, you forgot about it. When you come back, what happens is that oxidation occurs. Okay? The apple will turn uh brown like this in the picture. Okay, so oxidation will happen at every instant. Okay, so when that happens, when you see a browned apple, will you want to eat it? I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, so Oxidation happens at every single instant when we are breathing. Okay, breathing. Yes, correct. So it's a necessary process in our body. Okay, but what we don't want is uncontrollable oxidation reactions in the body. So what we see here is actually a nice normal cell. Mmm, very good. Okay, so it undergoes DNA damage because of this oxidation. Okay, these are some of the examples that we shared earlier, right? Okay, so what happens is that when the normal cell undergoes oxidation, okay, this is what happens. It becomes a initiated cell or what we call an abnormal cell. Okay, let's use an analogy. Okay, analogy, yeah? So we have the good cells. Okay, so good cells are like, uh, you think of it, a young, innocent boy. Ah, you know, they are very nice, very cheerful, going to school. Okay, but when oxidation happens, okay, they become bad. Okay, so they become what we call like a, a gangster cell. Okay, so gangster cells, mm, you often have this thing called a DNA repair. Okay, how does DNA repair happen? Because of your immune cells. Okay, so immune cells, you think of them as police. Okay, they don't straight away capture and then send to jail, right? So they will let you undergo, you know, um, different things like uh, go with the social worker, you know, maybe that make it turn over a new leaf. Okay, so gangsters can become back a normal cell. Gangster can become back a normal innocent boy. Okay, so at this stage, there's always um, choices for the body to do DNA repairs. Okay, so what happens? Okay. Gangster cells, uh, if you think of them, uh, like last time we watched, uh, watched Hong Kong dramas and all, right? Okay, so gangsters uh, often have more money, okay? Then they have more power than your normal innocent boy. So what they do? They bribe the policeman. Okay, so they bribe the policeman. So similarly, uh, these abnormal cells in the body, they have so much power, they can actually turn off systems in the body. Okay, they can switch off certain mechanisms so that your policeman no longer recognize them. Mm. Yeah, so it's like bribery and corruption, okay? So this analogy doesn't take place in Singapore, okay? <laughs> the Singapore, everyone would capture cash, okay? But imagine, okay, if your innocent boy becomes an abnormal cell, becomes a gangster cell, and then it turns off the mechanisms in the body, your immune cell can no longer recognize it. And it starts to grow, okay? If your policemen don't catch the gangsters, they start growing and spreading, 
Okay, so and expanding their reach. So now no longer just one cancer uh, or one gangster cell. It becomes a huge gang. Okay, and this, you see the difference? Initially, green color, right? They actually transform itself. Okay, transform. So down there are even three different types of um, cells in the, in the spread. Okay, so when our immune system is unable to control, this, uh, the tumor mass starts growing and starts spreading. They can even draw blood supply towards themselves, okay, and establish a whole new network. So um, maybe in like, uh, like if you think about it, uh, I've seen uh, the tumor mass, uh, size of a ping pong ball, okay, size of an egg, and even the size of a guava. Yep. Mm. Okay, because of a lot of transformation. Now, okay, so this whole initiation process, right, is actually worsened by excessive oxidation reactions. Okay, so I want you to come with me. Eh? Okay, so oxidation is good or bad? Can anyone just answer? Is oxidation good or bad? Very good, Jingyi. Okay, Mel as well, okay, uh, June as well, okay, oxidation is bad, okay, what about immunity, immunity is good or bad, mm. okay, okay, <laughs> okay, my senior physician said, okay, uh, good in a controlled uh, amount as well, okay, so, um, so basically, immunity, everything in, ex in not in excess, is in a balanced mode. Nah. Immunity is important and it's good for the body. Okay? And uh, oxidation is bad. Okay? Also in a limited amount, because like, we need to um, progress and all, right? Okay, so the next question will be, Physician Leong, how can I tell if my immunity is good? Okay, do I have to take like blood tests and things like that? Mm. So I'm going to teach you how to be TCM physician in your household. Okay, I give you three seconds ah, to run and get a mirror. Okay, three seconds. Go, go, go. Okay, or just move yourself into the toilet, switch on the light. Okay, naturally, better to be um, quite light. Okay, so I want to give you a tip how to read your tongue. Mm, okay, why the tongue? Anyone knows why the tongue? Uh, okay, so some say uh, because it's the easiest thing to see. Uh, no, any, any. I give you one of the reasons why, okay? But the tip, the tongue uh, is actually the beginning of your digestive tract. And it gives a good reflection of what is happening inside the body. Okay? So this is how an ideal tongue looks like. Okay, all of you, ah, sustain your tongue, huh? ideal tongue. Wow, nice pink. Wow, very chill. Uh -huh. You see the coating on the tongue? Thin coating. That's necessary, okay? Thin coating. Uh -huh. The size of the tongue? Very nice, sharp curves. Uh -huh. Okay? How many of you want this tongue? Okay, myself included. Of course, I want this tongue. Okay, so how many of you do not have this tongue? Okay, you can just type in the chat. Okay, I'll try to look at it uh, on and off. Okay, so, but if you do not have the ideal tongue, is your tongue looking like this? Yeah, so this tongue, okay, what we see is what we call the teeth marks all around. Okay, and the coating is very greasy. You know, it's like very murky, I always like to say. Okay, so this is a sign of qi and immunity, qi deficiency and weakened immunity. So, immunity and qi, they are synonymous. Mm, okay, if you have a strong qi, okay, uh, naturally it will derive a strong immunity for the body. So, this kind of tongue, uh, okay, the one in the middle, they tend to have um, gas in the stomach, bloatedness, sticky stools. Okay, um, some, some of this may be, these people may be overweight. Then they have very sluggish energy, like, yeah, okay? So, this definitely points to sub-health in your body. So, if you have this tongue, please do take note, okay? Um, just check with a TCM physician, is there anything you can do to help yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> okay. So, uh, Elena says, um, your mom's tongue, yes, okay? So, you need to check with a TCM physician, okay? But, on the right, uh, okay? So, everyone get ready your phone, uh. I want you to fastest fingers first. Tell me, what do you see on this tongue? What do you see on this tongue? Hmm. Anyone? Oh, someone said, oh, clot. Okay. You know your, you know your stuff. Okay. Oh, someone said colorful. Yeah. Very colorful. Different shades of red and purple. Okay. Yes. Purplish tone as well. The crack as well. Okay. So, 
this tongue is uh, what we see in a lot of people with chronic conditions. Okay, it's what is a type of what we call blood stasis tongue. Okay, imagine uh, now you don't see it as a tongue. Okay, but you see it as a piece of meat when you go grocery shopping. Uh, will you buy this tongue? Do you buy this piece of meat? Oh, okay. Someone said 50 shades of purple. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So naturally, you wouldn't. You will avoid it. Okay. If it, even if it's the last piece of meat, you will go to another section, buy more vegetables. Okay. So if you have this tongue, this there is really you have to take a, a, a hell lot of concern about it. Okay. Because um, these people may suffer from chronic conditions. Okay. They tend to have cold hands and feet. Um, a lot of aches and pain throughout the body. Okay, um, ladies with this tongue, okay, we have seen a lot of them. They have very poor menstrual, uh, bad menstrual cramps, uh, blood clots. Okay, uh, signs of cysts and fibroids in their body. Yeah. Okay, and a lot of cancer patients actually come presenting with this tongue. Yeah, half <laughs> cooked with pig liver. Yes. Okay. So now that you know how to read your tongue, how often should you read it? How often should we read it? Actually, every single morning, okay? Every single morning, before you brush your teeth, just check your tongue, okay? After you look at the tongue, okay, go and find out what are some of the healthy choices you can make, okay? Some of the, some of the healthy choices you can make. So, what are we going to do, okay? When we want to fight cancer, it's actually very simple. We want to reduce oxidative stress, and we want to strengthen and boost your immunity, all right? Because the speed of growth of a tumor is dependent on these two factors. Okay, so we have a scale down here. Okay, so remember the body is always about a balance, right? Okay, so for a tumor mass, okay, I'm not saying cancer, I'm just saying a tumor mass, okay, when it grows bigger in size, it's because there's always more oxidation. There is actually weakened immunity or weakened chi, okay, and then more blood and phlegm stagnation. Okay, it just clots down there. Yeah. On the other hand, what we want is to strengthen your immunity so that it can help to combat this tumor. Okay? Reduce oxidative stress, strengthen your immunity and chi, and then what else? Yes, correct. Reduce blood and phlegm stagnation. Okay? So focus on the green box. Okay? How to shrink a tumor. Okay? How to shrink a tumor mass. Okay, so um, the tips we'll be sharing today revolves around these three ideas. Okay, so we have to reduce oxidation and strengthen chi and immunity. That's through herbs and the food that Physician Law is going to share later. Okay, how to reduce stagnation is through the rebounding exercise. <gasps> did, I, did, I ex did I say <laughs> release? Okay, yeah. okay, pretend you never hear, pretend you never hear what I say. Okay, but I'm going to pass on to Physician Low. Okay, so she's a senior physician with Oriental Remedies. Okay, she is an expert in using both raw herbs and powdered medicine to help her patients with their conditions. Okay, um, I like that she really used very simple analogies and make it easy to remember and understand and absorb by the uh, by like you know her patients and all. Okay, so she has practical hands-on experience with uh, various ailments. So without further ado, let's welcome Physician Lo. Physician Lo, please. Hi, thank you, Physician Leong, for sharing with us the various triggers that cause cancer. And we are half a physician now because uh, all of us know how to read our own tongue. So you can differentiate between a normal tongue and a person, another person's tongue with poor immunity, uh, phlegm stagnation, blood stasis, etc. And most importantly, we learn two important points. Firstly, it is to improve immunity and reduce oxidation. So for my part, I will share with you the TCM portion which is how food and herbs can help to improve your immunity and reduce oxidation as well. So all of us know that good nutri nutrition is very important for all of us, especially for the cancer warriors out there. And in fact, we can um, sort of nourish our chi and improve our immunity by the food that we take. So today, I'll break it down into two main portions for you. First, the herbs or food that you can take to improve your immunity, that's number one. And second, to clear that internal heat that you may be feeling. So, what are the herbs that are good to improve your qi or to improve your immunity? So, especially for those who are undergoing chemotherapy or post-surgery, 
you might be feeling very tired, you may have very poor appetite, you will be experiencing fatigue. And if you are to go about going uh, around your daily lives, you can feel a little bit unmotivated. So our focus in treatment will be to give you the extra boost in energy so that you can uh, reduce all these symptoms. So first up, the herb. Uh, I guess all of you must be very familiar. This is called astragalus, also known as huang qi. And huang qi, this herb, it is known for its immune boosting functions. It is antiviral. Uh, it has anti-tumor functions. So it can usually help in some forms of cancer. As all of us know, our immunity declines with age, which means when we grow older, our ability to fight illnesses declines and our immune system will become weaker and we cannot fight all those viruses, bacteria, and cancerous cells. So this is why astragalus play a very important part in giving the body the boost in qi. It can increase the number of stem cells by encouraging them to develop into active immune cells. So you remember physician Leong talked about your police cells? So in fact, the more police cells there are, uh, the better it is and the higher the chances of us catching the gangster cells. So next up, we have Ling Zhi. So I guess I don't have to explain a lot about Ling Zhi, but there is another name of Ling Zhi called the Mushroom of Immortality because it is known for its capability to boost vitality as well as improve the symptoms of patients who are experiencing uh, tiredness or poor appetite. Usually it is used by patients with a uh, poor chemo, a post-chemo, not poor chemo, it's poor immunity, post-chemo or surgery. And we often use Ling Zhi for patients who have low energy level, poor appetite, or even breathlessness during that course of treatment. So do you know one fun fact? The uh, highest concentration of active ingredient in Ling Zhi actually lies in the cracked spores of Ling Zhi. So if you go Ling Zhi shopping, you will realize, eh, why is the price of cracked spores of Ling Zhi and Ling Zhi so different? So you do, uh, to, do keep that in mind. And when you go Ling Zhi shopping, you can go find out more. So for both astragalus and Ling Zhi, they are both suitable for, to incorporate into your herbal soup. So around 10 to 15 grams will be sufficient. And if you are taking existing TCM herbal medication or ongoing treatment, so maybe you can take the soup once a week. And if you are not taking any form of herbs, uh, two to three times a week will be sufficient. Other than boosting immunity, let's make a guess. Uh, what is the similarity between Huang Qi and Ling Zhi? Ah, yes, very clever. Both herbs are, ve are very, very, very high in antioxidants. So you can see how everything is linking up together, boosting immunity and reducing oxidation. Next up, for some of you, treatments such as chemotherapy and radiotherapy, they can create pretty bad side effects. And for some, it can be very hard for them to bear. So I've seen some of our patients experience dry mouth, dry tongue, and they have this uh, sort of heat inside their body that they cannot exactly pinpoint. So this is uh, all ca characterized under heat symptoms and TCM. So, and for some tumors, they are characterized as re du, which means heat toxin after assessment by our physicians. So for these cases, Adding some herbs to remove that internal heat will be very important. So the first herb, which is Sheng Di Huang, which is the black herb that you see on your left. Oh, I have the sample over here. I hope that you can see. Yeah, it is a very, very black herb. This Sheng Di Huang, it is traditionally used in TCM that to help clear the heat, nourish the fluid. So it is used for cases with a low-grade fever or thirst, dry mouth, constipation etc. And uh, in TCM, these symptoms will be characterized under warm pathogenic diseases and in a modern context, side effects of chemo or radiotherapy. So after taking this herb, the Sheng Di Huang, patients will usually, usually feel uh, there's more fluid inside the mouth, they may feel less of the heat and feel generally feel more comfortable. That's the first herb. And the second herb, most of you must be very familiar with it. It is called Xia Ku Cao. Last time, my mother used to use uh, xia ku cao very often um, for me. So after I know about xia ku cao, I tend to drink it lesser. I will let you know why later. So uh, it is very commonly seen uh, because we drink in the herbal teas that, we, uh, that our parents may cook. And it can help to clear internal heat. So another function of xia ku cao is that it can help to reduce 
nodules or dissolved nodules in TCM. In Chinese, we call it ran jian san jie. And similarly, after taking xia ku tao, uh, some patients will actually feel relief from any form of headache, eye pain. Um, they are also considered under uh, heat symptoms. So why is this herb not suitable for long-term usage? Yeah, because it is too cooling. Some people may have diarrhea. And because um, for some conditions, you may not belong to the heat um, segment. So for cancer patients, I will highly encourage you to speak with your physician so that uh, your physician can guide you on the herbs for your specific constitution and also customize the herbs wherever you are on your recovery journey. So a lot of patients will ask me, physician low, how to eat those herbs? It is too bitter. I can't really swallow. So, which brings me to the making of your herbal soup. So, it is possible to make herbal soup very yummy if you add the correct ingredients. And we have specially formulated herbal soup that is good for the family to drink uh, on a regular basis. So, the herbs that we choose are not only good for the general public, it can also help to tackle some of the side effects uh, our cancer warriors that out there may be feeling post-chemo, post-radio or post-targeted therapy. So you can conveniently cook one whole pot of soup and drink it as a family. So maybe let me share the recipe with you. So when we cook herbal soup, we will definitely need a base, right? The base, you can choose big bones such as pork bone, chicken bone. Some prefer fish bone. Uh, it is okay as well. And for vegetarians out there, you can choose uh, any mushrooms of your choice. In this case, we use shiitake mushroom. Within the soup, we will, you will want to add something to nourish your teeth, which physician Leong said earlier, to improve your immunity. So as mentioned earlier, you can add in huang qi, dang shen, or bai zhu. These three herbs are well known for, it, for their qi boosting capabilities. At the same time, bai zhu, hmm, uh, the third herb, yeah, the third herb as shown below, it can also help to improve digestion as well. Next, we see a lot of patients experiencing uh, appetite issues. You might struggle with your appetite. Uh, you have no appetite, you can't eat. But at the same time, you are losing mass. So for these people, it is very important for you to take in enough nutrients in order to build up that line of defense to combat cancer. So I highly encourage you to add in some herbs to improve your, improve your appetite. Uh, the herbs include fuling or chenpi. And these two herbs can strengthen your digestive system. Finally, for those of you who are characterized under the um, heat toxin segment, you may be feeling heaty, dry throat, dry mouth, constipation. Remember, remember I said earlier? Uh, so you may want to add in some herbs to clear the heat. You can add in sheng ti huang. Uh, you can add in sha shen. Uh, if you belong to the heat symptoms, uh, you can add these herbs in for flavor. And for those of you who are worried that Xiong Ti Huang, because it looks black, right? Uh, if I add it into a soup, will my soup become black as well? Uh, do not worry. I've tried it myself before. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't become black. And actually, it tastes quite okay as well. So remember, I tell you about the frequency when you drink the herbal soup. Uh, for those with ongoing treatment, you can take it once a week. Uh, for those who are not, uh, you can take it two to three times a week. Then, there are some patients who will tell me again, ah, physician though, I am very tired because you are, on go, you are doing all those tr treatments, right? Uh, you have chemo, radio, and this can, be, uh, this, this can zap the energy out of you. So we know mm, because we hear a lot of this. Yeah, so what we have done is to formulate mm, convenient herbal teas that are suitable for regular consumption. In our immunity, as seen on the, on the left, uh, we have included herbs such as Huang Qi, which is our hero herb, as well as weight dates uh, and Gan Cao. And these works together to improve your digestion and improve your appetite. And what I mentioned earlier, a lot of patients will experience heat symptoms, including dry throat, uncomfortable dryness, or heat inside your mouth, inside your body. Uh, this is why we have formulated the throat soothing tea, uh, which can help your body produce more fluids uh, keeping you more hydrated and comfortable. So compared to soups, um, the tea making will be slightly more convenient. Just take out one tea bag, put it in a cup, add in 1.5 liters of water and you can drink it for the whole day. 
You can even drink it for the whole family. Take it once or twice a week will be sufficient. And it can be shared with a family, especially for those who are looking at uh, drinking some tea to improve your immunity. I can choose immunity tea. As well, or you're having some sore throat after all the video conference, you can choose your throat soothing tea. So now we are done with food. So we talk about herbs. Uh, we talk about how to make your herbal soup uh, and your herbal tea. And so for those of you who will want to know what kind of soup and the soup recipe, right? You can feel free to let us know as well. And after we are done with food, let's move on to exercise. Uh, just now, Physician Leong talked about exercise, right? Have you heard about that? Uh, if you know about that, right, uh, I will talk about it later. Let me talk about this organ called San Jiao first, uh, because this is largely linked to the exercise we are doing later. So what is San Jiao? Um, San Jiao is actually a virtual organ in our body. It is a network where all the fluids, all the food essences and waste pass through. So you think of it as a like hollow organ, a pipe, uh, a pipe. So if everything is smooth flowing, uh, with all the fluids, uh, food essence, all the waste is flowing smoothly, any form of blockage in San Jiao will result in the retention, retention of fluid. Uh, it can manifest in the form of urine retention, fatigue, edema conditions. And in Western terms, these conditions are linked to what we call blockage of your lymphatic system, which is also called lymphatic blockage. So now, think of San Jiao or your lymphatic system as something uh, like the pipes in your house uh, that drain your house. So what will happen if you realize that there is a clock? You will try to unclog it, right? Why? Why will you try to unclog it? Because otherwise, uh, the whole house will smell. There will be very unpleasant odors. Uh, there will be hair and bacteria clogging up the space. And it can cause a lot of damage inside your house. And to troubleshoot, uh, if you call the plumber, say, hey, there's a clock inside in my house. I need you ASAP. When the plumber comes, the plumber will have to find the source of the blockage and clog it so that the substances can flow more smoothly in the pipes. Otherwise, in the long run, uh, the pipes may burst, uh, which is something that all of us don't want. So just like your house pipes, the lymphatic system can also be congested. It can also be blocked by proteins, by toxins, and these congestion can lead to adverse health conditions such as fatigue, mm, compromised immune system, or chronic skin conditions, cold limbs, bloating, headaches, etc, etc. And actually, many cancer patients have been experiencing this kind of symptoms for years. They just didn't know that uh, the reason it is because of congested lymphatic drainage. So, what should we do? We should clear the pipes regularly. So, regularly cleaning the pipes can maintain the function and it is a good strategy to prevent a clog in the first place. So, by clearing our lymphatic system, right, uh, it can also allow our immune cells it's also called lymphocytes, which live inside the lymph nodes to be more alert. So, you know, uh, when you, maybe you are going to get a sore throat, right? Uh, you may experience, some of you uh, may experience swelling over here. Am I right? Anyone experience swelling over here when you are about to fall sick or when you don't feel well? So, these are actually signs uh, of lymph nodes, mm, of the lymph nodes swelling up as the first line of defense when the external pathogens enter your body, right? So when the pipes are clear, the pulleys and the lymph nodes, they'll be more active. So they are able to catch the things that are passing through and they are able to eat it up and clear it up more effectively. So this is why people with a smooth flowing lymphatic system will fall sick less easily. Uh, they are, they'll feel lighter with lesser inflammation, less aches, less pains, etc. So remember, if there is a blo blockage, you will need to unclog your lymphatic system so to help with unclogging the blockage, let us do some rebounding exercises. So have you heard of rebounding exercises before? Or people may know as jumping on the trampoline, bounce. Hmm. So if you can see the GIF on the left, right? Uh, this is a person jumping on the trampoline. So rebounding itself, it is a low impact exercise. Jump, jumping on the trampoline can help with lymphatic drainage. And it is also fairly on our joints. So when you bounce up and down with the gravity, bouncing up and down motion, it can help in the limb flow and it can flush any form of blockage uh, in the limb nodes. So it can increase the drainage of toxins from organs and muscle tissue. So it is normal to feel extra thirsty after the exercise. 
Because through this exercise, it can also help to improve our blood circulation, mm. increase oxygen supply to the different muscles, different tissues, which will in turn elicit a very healthy immune response to combat cancer. So the one that you see in the picture, right? Uh, there's different kinds of bouncing methods. And the one that you see that we show now, it is actually a low impact bounce. It is suitable for all to try. So rebounding is also good if you do it every day. Mm. If you have tried rebounding like me, you will know that after bouncing for around five minutes, I, I feel really, really tired. My heart is thumping. Uh, it's like a cardio workout. So regular rebounding will strengthen your heart as well as strengthen your lungs. So resulting, it can, this can result in a higher breathing capacity throughout the body. So as a result, you'll feel more energetic. you have increased resistance, stamina, and speed. For those of you who have yet to try this exercise, uh, I have noticed that Active SG, uh, that's a few months ago, I realized that Active SG, they do have rebounding exercise, but I think they termed it bounce. So if you do exercise and you do use Active SG, you can do remember to give it a try and you can let us know how you feel after that. So now let me pass the time back to Physician Leong, uh, who personally has researched a lot and brought in a lot of new technology to help our patients feel better faster. So she has worked with many pa cancer patients in the past seven years and will share with all of you the tech-enabled therapies that can help. So let me pass the time back to Physician Leong. Okay, Please. thank you Physician Lo for sharing with us the herbs. Uh, okay, do you remember herbs? Yes, Huang Qi and Ling Zhi, okay, Sheng Di Huang and Xia Pu Cao, okay. So also the tea, okay, and the soup as well. So for those of you who are like me, Cantonese, uh, then we like drinking soups, okay, as well as the rebounding exercise, okay. So um, all of this is to strengthen your qi, strengthen your immunity, reduce oxidation, and as well as combat some of the symptoms of your chemo and radiotherapy. Okay, so at Oriental Remedies, we help many patients in their cancer journey. So, um, classic, um, I group them into three groups of patients. Okay, so the first one is those who are keen on prevention. Okay, so they don't have um, cancer, okay, but, but they may have seen their loved ones who have suffered from it and want to do their best to prevent it. Okay, then the second group is that those who have been diagnosed early and they want to use TCM to complement their current conventional treatments. Um, and lastly, okay, for the late stage cancer patients, we they want to help us help. They want us to help them with you know their managing the side effects, uh, managing the stress, the sleep, as well as the pain management. Okay, so no matter which category, okay, which group you are on your cancer journey, remember that there's these three things that will aid your body. Remember what are the three things I shared earlier? Okay, the first one is reduce oxidation. Second one, strengthen your chi and immunity. And lastly, mm -hmm, yes, very good. Yes, reduce stagnation. Okay, so all these three will aid in the recovery. So I will share two of our tech enhanced therapies to help you um, all. Okay, so I know there are many patients uh, who are actually very well versed in uh, herbs as well as uh, acupuncture for cancer support because you have done enough research. Very good. I like patients who do their research. Okay, so um, for this webinar, we want to share the knowledge that will give you the extra boost. Yeah, okay, the extra boost that will give you, uh, it to help you in your cancer journey. So continuing from the rebounding exercise, uh, as well as the herbs, okay. So in the past, I, when I was in China, I heard this patient say, okay, uh, the doctor advised him to go on a more vegetarian diet. And then he was saying like, oh, no. Okay, in Chinese, uh, it says like this. Okay, yeah, even with my Chinese tone, uh, it says like this. Now, I do Okay, so in translation, it says that why don't I just become a rabbit? Because I have to be put on the vegetarian diet. Okay, so plus the rebounding. Okay, then you coin, 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 coin. Okay, <laughs> yes, so be a rabbit is good. Okay, so nice and docile. Okay, but the thing is, all of this will help to unclog the lymphatic system. Okay, so after being a physician for so long, I can predict, okay, I can have a vision, I can predict what you're going to do. I tell you about rebounding, all of you, wow, go and find a rebounding uh, trampoline and then go and do rebounding. Very good, okay? But when I see them two weeks later during consultation, I will say, how is your exercise regime? You know what they say? Ah, yeah, okay, I only managed to squeeze five minutes one day. 
Or some of them say, oh, you know, it's in the corner, but I'm too busy to do, or I'm too tired to do, and all. Okay, eight out of ten patients will actually tell me that. Yeah. So why? Because all this takes energy and habit change. So today I want to share with you a very relaxing electrolymphatic drainage therapy. So this is what we have in our clinic. This technology is more efficient than rebounding. Okay. So imagine this is like a smooth, soft, manual lymphatic drainage with a machine. Uh, okay. So uh, this is not just said by me. Okay. Why not we just listen to Dr. Lodi? He's a medical doctor. So he has been he specialized in cancer treatments okay, for the past decades, okay, so he has successfully reversed even stage 4 cancer with holistic methods. Um, so if I was, if so, some of you who are with us, uh, with Oriental Remedy since like a uh, long ago, okay, I went to Phuket early this year, okay, before the COVID-19 and all, it was in January 2020, we went there to train his therapist how to do ELT for his cancer patients, yeah, all the way in Phuket. Okay, so he uses a series of um, holistic methods, okay, and ELT is one of them. Okay, maybe not from me saying, let's hear from him. We clean the colon and we get the lymphatics because health is circulation, it's moving. For example, if you, if you come to a river and you're hiking, you'll drink out of it. As long as it's running and sparkling, but if you down the road a little bit, you see that it's turned more like a pond, you're not going to drink out. So when circulation stops is when we get, that's why the conventional advice, you have a, a lymph node in your, uh, from the breast cancer, don't do any manipulation. Sure, just let it sit there and fester, let it become worse. No, bring back the circulation. We do lymphatic therapy. Women come in with tumors really this large, after they get a good session of lymphatic therapy, they're down. You decongest it, get it flowing. You know, that's mm. what yeah. it's, and don't take out lymph nodes. If someone says, this cancer is in my lymph node, I'll say, yes. I mean, unless it's obliterated it and you've got a, then we're, that's another story. But if it's in the lymph node, then your lymph node's doing its job. It's assessing it and it's developing an, an appropriate response. It will send out the cytokines to call in the other guys to alert the rest of the body. That's what it does. It's like, CIA headquarters all you know all over the place you know and you've got the you've got the you, you've got the uh, officers out there and with just t-cells macrophages they're out there doing that so and then you got to bring them in the headquarters and question them and then you said I mean this is that's the way it works so you don't want to remove so anyway we use lymphatic therapy both manual massage and this ALT which uses argon and krypton they're noble gases and you just move it ab above in a glass tube you move it above the skin and it moves moves along the lymph it's very good. ALT. ELT. Electro, ELT. Electrolymphatic therapy. Okay. And you said it uses argon and krypton. And other, yeah, and other uh, uh, noble gases. And noble gases are the ones in the periodic table that don't have any reactivity. They have complete outer shells. You know, for example, chloride, fluoride, bromide, and iodine have a negative charge. And sodium, potassium, magnesium have a positive charge. Well, there are ones over here that are neither positive nor negative. They, find, they're, they call them noble gases. noble gases. They don't react. The veins are draining out the waste. But 10% of that waste is left on purpose for the lymph system so that it can go to the lymph node and the lymph node can figure out if there's anything needs addressing, anything, any kind of defense response. Right. So that, that's, that's the way it was designed by the designer. So we have to keep that flow. If we don't keep that flow, if we start getting congestion, we're going to have a problem. I went on mute again. I'm so sorry. Okay, so anyway, I was just saying to myself, okay, because I'm alone in the room. Okay, that how um to he, he's a he's a great guy. So um we met him, me and Henny. Okay, met him in uh, Phuket early this year. So we are glad to be the first TCM clinic. Okay, to actually use this FDA registered medical device to help our patients. Okay, so we also use it for people with general wellness concerns as well. Um, many patients actually like. I wouldn't say like, I say love this non-invasive therapy, okay, because they could feel a significant difference. Um, actually, I want to share one, uh, okay, so it was two years back, two years back, a couple of years, maybe two to three years back. Yeah, so I have this patient, uh, young chap, okay, he has tongue cancer. Uh, by then, when I met him, it was already stage four. So he was young, he was 30 plus, he just got married one year ago. 
Okay, so when I saw him, he had only managed to do one um, round of chemotherapy because after that session, his white blood cells drastically went down and the doctors told him, um, you know, there, there's nothing much you can do. You just have to undergo palliative care and support. So, but uh, he's, he and his wife are very, very determined people. They, they, you know, they, they are like, oh, you want to do everything they can to help themselves. So they stay all the way in the east side. Uh, then we didn't have the East Coast branch yet. So they, they just travel down, you know, on a regular basis just to do ELT. So because his tumor is like really huge around here, okay, so he couldn't verbalize his words. So we rely on writing, we rely on hand signals, you know, like, like oh, you know, where's the pain? And he'll point to me here, there, everywhere. So, um, but, you know, when I see him, right, I can see that he's very, very tired. Yeah, um, as, as the... the, the the condition progresses, right? So I can see him visibly tired. Probably from the sleep, probably from the pain at night, he has to use like morphine patches and all. So, uh, but after every single session, right? Because he couldn't talk, I'll ask him, hey, how are you doing? You know, like, uh, like how, how is it today? Then he'll always, that, that's, that's, all, that's all I get from him. Two thumbs up. Okay, um, so I asked from his wife to understand more. So his wife said that he just slept better, you know, the pain is more managed um, on the days that he do ELT and all. Yeah, so uh, it was actually really memorable because the, um, he was actually asking for a session two days before he passed away. And the wife messaged me and then he was like, oh, can we arrange for a session on Saturday? Then, uh, then Sunday, and then they didn't, they didn't turn up. Uh, but then, um, so at the part that I didn't have manpower to ask them much. But then he, the wife told me on Sunday that he passed away the day before. Yeah, so um, I think this memory is very strong because it actually, um, like, how do I say? It actually hit me that we can actually help our patients um, to improve their quality of life with our therapies. Yeah, so um, so some of you who are, have been our regular patients, very good. Um, so you probably have done ELT as well, because okay, we try to get everyone to try a bit, you know, to make sure that they can get their system unclogged. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, uh, there's three things our therapist and myself always tell you. How do you know if your lymphatic drainage is congested? Three things. So one is flow. So what is flow? Okay, so I have uh, the... The cable here okay so this is uh, inside this glass probe okay that's where the noble gases are okay so the flow the sound <laughs> okay so what happens is okay if the area has a smooth flow okay so this assuming in on my hand uh, this area has smooth flow this is the congestion okay so what happens is that if the smooth flow is like this nice and good yeah so this is when there's less congestion but when it comes here and there's congestion you'll be like that Yes, very congested, very sluggish movement. Okay, so we need to decongest and sweep again, decongest and sweep again. So that's flow. Okay, what about sound? Okay, because it's um, ionized, what happens is that it produces a penetrable depth. Okay, so when the area is smooth and clear, it will be a loud sound, like zzzz, zzzz, zzzz. Okay, so by areas that are congested, this is what happens. Huh? So it'll be like zzzz, zzzz, zzzz. Do you hear anything? No. It actually went silent. Yes. Okay. So what happens is that we need to decongest it and clear. Decongest it and clear. Okay. So this is just gliding over on your skin surface. And last one is what we call the smell. Okay. Uh, smell is something. <laughs> uh, this is not just for cancer patients. Okay. But also people with a lot of inflammation in their body. Okay. The smell is really very very strong okay and it just it can happen even after a 15 minute session okay so we need to decongest and ensure good lymphatic drainage in the body so um with 1000 you know 10,000 10,000 over observation by dr jennifer okay uh, they always say that each elt session uh, because of the depth that it can penetrate is actually more effective than uh, mld 8 to 10 times more effective Okay, so depending on the stage you are, which category you are looking at, okay, of the cancer journey, you do about one to two sessions a week. Yeah, so it depends on what is the stage. Then usually our physicians will assess your condition before um, letting you know on the treatment plan. Okay, other than ELT, mm, 
Okay, we also have this thing called the negative ion therapy. Okay, this is probably the single most powerful to complement our herbs as well as our acupuncture and all the traditional therapy that we have. Okay, so this medical device is from Japan and uh, it can generate up to 20 million negative ions. Yes, 20 million. Anyone of you think that 20 million is, is like a huge amount? Anyone of you think that 20 million is a really huge amount? Mm, yes, okay, you have 20 million. Uh, if only I have 20 million dollars. Uh, uh, okay, so 20 million is a huge amount. But compared to the number of cells in our body, which can run from 3 trillion and above, okay, so 20 million is now, it seems like a Chinese saying called way pu zu dao. But yet, we need it. It is so necessary. Okay, so is this particular machine okay, is used in over 400 medical institutions in, across Japan. Okay, we use it for cancer, we use it for patients with chronic conditions, we use it for our fertility as well. Okay, so why negative ions is important for our body? Okay, link back to the three key notes that I tell you earlier. Why is negative ions important? Okay, I know it's on the slide. Come, try. Let's, let's see who managed to get it right. Ah, yes. Okay, Tong got it right. Oxidation. Very good. Okay, so oxidation can trigger DNA damage. So we need to help the body reverse it, okay? And one thing I like uh, if I, because for those of you who have tried it before, okay, one thing I like about the wisdom of this doctor right, or this inventor is that, okay, one, it can, he managed to make the machine send 20 million negative ions. So there's a huge amount, okay, very good. But he knows how to strategically put, uh, you know, like, like strategize. Uh, he knows how to strategically place all these conductive plates on certain points on the body. Okay, so these points are actually our acupuncture points. Yeah, okay, why? Because research has shown that acupuncture points have actually less electrical resistance. So we have less electrical resistance means these negative ions that are being released by the, body, uh, by the machine can be better absorbed by the body. Okay, so he placed all these points strategically across our body. So for cancer patients, we have specific two protocols. One is to strengthen your immunity as well as improve circulation. Okay, targeting strengthening immunity can help to reduce oxidation and then help to improve circulation to combat the stagnation. Okay, so it typically it takes the body about three months okay, to regenerate, grow new cells and all because some cells will die, then you have young new cells coming up. Okay, so it takes about three months. So we usually complement um, these therapies, as well as uh, herbs, as well as acupuncture, depending on what is most suitable for the patient, okay, to help them feel better faster. And uh, we recently have Physician Lim, okay, another physician in our, in our team, okay, so he actually has this cancer patient who managed to do multiple sessions of negative iron treatment, and she actually reported better sleep. It's something that she has been missing for a bit because of the pain management. Okay, so um, we are glad to be also the only TCM clinic okay, to offer this treatment for our patients. So those of you who have been putting off complementing your TCM treatments with your Western medicine, uh, because maybe the herbs are very bitter, you know, or acupuncture is very painful, okay, you can consider this an ELT, all these non-invasive therapies that will help your body fight oxidation. So uh, let's do some recap. Mm, okay, the first part, we talk about the causes of tumor mass and cancer. Okay, so there are three key points that we have shared there. Okay, to, in order to combat it, we need to reduce oxidation. Okay, improve qi and immunity as well as reduce blood and phlegm stagnation. Okay, all these three. Okay, quite easy to remember. They can be broadcast broaden into a lot of various different um, um, expansion and topics, okay, but this is the key ideas. And then Physician Low shared about the TCM support. Remember, just be a rabbit, okay? So rabbit <laughs> goes for something that's clean and healthy, okay, with the herbs, okay, we have immunity with Huang Qi and Ling Zhi, and then we have dryness, um, to combat the dryness, okay, we have Shu Shen Di Huang as well as Xia Ku Chao. Okay, uh, so she also shared two cheese that are very convenient for you to brew. And lastly, like rabbit, lah, jumping, point, 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 point. Yes, okay, that is your rebounding exercise because that helps to unclog your lymphatic system.
Okay, and then I shared some tech enhanced therapies as well. So that will all help to combat your whole overall body and improve your overall wealth. Okay, health. Okay, so um, maybe I can share with you one of the patients who tried all of the different therapies in our clinic. Okay, so we have uh, Susie. So Susie retired in 2018. Okay, so she came by to us in 2019 because of a shoulder pain. So I asked her, hey, how do you get your shoulder pain? You know, then she was like, oh, last time I do admin. Then, you know, the copier very heavy. So she was like, ah, push up the copier, put in the paper, boom. Then, okay, so the copier was very heavy and she think that that might be the reason why she injured her shoulder. Okay, so for her, so shoulder, okay, that's like, okay, can we do acupuncture, point, 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 put in a few points and then we gave her some herbs. But she didn't like the herbs. So we said, okay, why don't you try ELT. So ELT because it's um, painless, right? So try ELT. So usually ELT uh, can sense uh, and because of the, the resistance that we talk about, right? It can tell you where are the areas of blockage. So because shoulder pain, naturally your shoulder will be congested. But for her, it wasn't just the shoulders. Her whole right side of the body, yes, this whole area was congested. So we told her, Susie, um, you know, this is quite serious because usually it's just isolated area, but now this whole area is congested. You need to come back for more sessions. But because it was near Chinese New Year period, she was very busy. She was like, okay, okay, I'll make an appointment after that. Okay, let me enjoy Chinese New Year. Okay. But what happened was that during Chinese New Year period, she actually saw that her nipple bled. Yes, her nipple bled again. The first time it happened was in 2018, near the end of the year. And it's the second time it happened. So she was like, okay, I need to do something about it. I go for a mammogram check. Okay, so with the oncology, she did a mammogram. Boom. Okay, what happened? Is the, the, the visual, like, like, you know, Milky Way? Pop, 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 a lot of stars. Okay, a lot of different small little bugs. So, of course, the doctor said that, hey, you know, this one looks like a great mess. Okay, so we have to do surgery. So between the diagnosis and the surgery, it was about a month or so. Okay, three weeks to a month. So during this period, then she decided to okay, take more effort to reduce the oxidative stress. So she did um, ELT, she did acupuncture, she did um, herbal medication, she did negative ion. So she did a full flash. Okay, everything that can help her, she do. So when she finally did the surgery, okay, so she did surgery, the doctor actually managed to remove one main mass and another smaller one. And the doctor, told her, uh, of course, the doctor didn't say like, oh, no, what happened? But the thing is that she was happy because the, in the end, the, the, it was actually contained. So all of these different treatments helped to uh, combat her issue and help to uh, reduce the oxidative stress and improve circulation in the body. So to this day, she's also still doing all the different treatments available okay, to help herself. Okay, so that's the reason why after that, she gave us this really nice, sweet, you know, testimonial. Okay, so she, she um, and, uh, and thought of that, okay, she actually, like I said, if all of you who have been in the journey, okay, so do take note. There is something that you can change, which is your lifestyle. Okay, so what she did, she also changed her lifestyle. She, she eats a lot healthier. You know, she goes out with her family and friends, they be like, oh, everyone, like, you know, eating this and that, she'll go for something that has the less oxidation um, that, that will generate less oxidation in her body. So kudos to her, okay, for doing all that she can to help herself, changing her lifestyle, you know, doing different treatments that will help to boost her immunity. Okay, so if any of you would like to um, know more about how ORG can help you or how Oriental Remedies can help you, okay, on your cancer journey, here is the time. Um, usually, I won't say it for the other, other uh, webinars and stuff like that, but for cancer patients, okay, our consultation will take up to an hour. Yes, up to an hour. Why? They're like, oh, you know, you go, you go see doctor very fast, chop, 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 out of the door, but... For cancer patients, okay, we really spend the time to understand their body constitution. Okay, we really take take the pulse, see the ear, take the tongue, okay, then explain to them why are they doing why are they having this and then understand from them what are their next approach, are they going conventional or not? So there's a lot of things that you want to say. So consultation is about an hour long. So regardless of which stage in your cancer journey that you are on, so we have a team of seven bilingual physicians that will help you understand your body so that you can actually be on a road to recovery. 
So all of us graduated from NTU and then in China as well. So we had average of 10 years of experience. So if you have always wanted to see a TCM physician, but maybe you don't know, like, mm, I don't really understand the consultation. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. So we pride ourselves in demystifying it for you. Okay. Why? Because we want you to understand what is happening to your body. Okay, so in Singapore, we realized that, hey, a lot of people don't understand their condition. They don't understand, like, uh, what is happening in their body. They don't understand what the doctors are telling them. Okay, so we pride ourselves in demystifying it for you and to help you. So, like I said, on top of TCM treatments that we have in the clinic, we also have all these tech-enhanced therapies that can help you feel better faster.